Welcome to this episode of On the Record, your official source of information from Bowser Schools. Hi everybody, I'm Sonia Bales. And I'm Jason Rowland. Welcome to episode four of On the Record with Bowser Schools, and we're excited to have you with us. This is our our bi-weekly uh, release of information from Bozier Schools where you can come and tune in and you can get all the information, that the things that are going on. Uh, we are brought to you and sponsored by our title sponsor, Citizens National Bank. We want to thank Mr. Jason Smith and his entire team for all they do for Bozier Schools. And we want to encourage everybody to be sure that you like and subscribe our YouTube channel on the record with Bozier Schools so you do not miss a single episode of all the information coming to you, the official news source from Bozier Schools. Hey, we're coming inside, coming to you from inside one of our classrooms this morning where all of the magic happens here at Bozier Schools. These are among some of our best and brightest high school students who are in a pre-educator class. It's an effort of Bozier Schools to grow our own. We've heard of the nationwide shortage of teachers uh, across not only Louisiana, but across the entire country. And so what we've done is taken the initiative to try to create new and uh, uh, new initiatives to generate a pool of applicants that will come back and return and become educators. I, I spent earlier part of the week with a bunch of different superintendents and administrators from all over the state and, and everybody is talking about the same thing. And a lot of questions came to us, what are you guys doing in Bossier? What are you doing in Bossier? And so uh, we were able to talk about this program a little bit as well as some other things that you're gonna hit on in just a few minutes. That's right, we're also going to be talking about how the district is sweetening the deal to recruit substitute teachers. So hopefully you'll be interested in that and coming to work for Bossier Schools. Also, how we are incentivizing paraprofessionals already in our classrooms to become certified teachers. And we're going to be learning about changes at the state level to the state certification program, which will hopefully simplify it a bit, you know, for those wanting to go into education. So we're going to uh, talk about those changes at the state level. But first, we have some remarkable student athletes and also uh, members of Bossier Schools that we want to recognize for uh, just being at the top of their game. Check out this week's roster of our superintendent shout outs. Congratulations to Aaron Burrell, who is ranked the number one kicker in the nation, according to polls. Media sources also credit the Parkway Junior for recently setting a new school and parish record for longest field goal, kicking the ball an incredible 52 yards. Michaela Williams is grabbing world attention on the basketball court, once again winning the 5 3 by 3 World Cup championship in the U18 division. The Parkway senior was also named most valuable player for the second year. Michaela now has three gold medals for winning back-to-back FIBA 3x3 World Championships, two MVP titles, and a 5x5 championship. A shout-out to Houghton High School for its incredible success off the field at its 10th annual American Heart Association Red Out Game. The Buccaneers raised more than $5,500 to fight heart disease. And cue the applause for Christy Bucker, our first Gold Star winner of the school year. Christy is professional development and grants coordinator for Bossier Schools, who received numerous accolades for overseeing the summer learning program. She's also instrumental in leading the district's I-3 Art Expo. Well, congratulations again to our students and to our staff members. Uh, excellent job. Hey, you just returned from working car line this morning at WT Elementary School. Tell us more about that. Well, Coach Reggie Digilamo's pre-educator class, uh, her students go over to WT Lewis periodically and help with car line. Uh, they greet the students, they help get them out of the car, they open the doors, they welcome them to school. It's very and, lively. They have music playing. Yeah, I mean, it sets the tone sets for the morning. the tone for the day. You could tell that uh, when, when the kids saw some of these kids, you know, the smiles, their faces light up. And what was fun was actually seeing kids that I taught, I saw their own kids get out this morning. So <laughs> as, full you, circle. as you said, it makes us feel old, but no, what a, just a great day and a great opportunity for them to see just the small impact that they make on the lives of young people each and every day. Well, I'll tell you what, how about we take our viewers along as we go rolling with Roland. being an educator is and more in depth of all the roles and all that kind of stuff and make sure that I want to be an educator which I've like wanted to be since I was in like third grade so. 
Uh, we're in a pre-educated program, so we go around helping kids around all schools, middle schools, high school, elementary, just helping observe so we become future teachers later on in life. It's great, it's awesome. Being able to engage with the kids, seeing all the different levels, middle school, elementary, high school, even now, it's, it's a great experience. Yeah. Now, do they know uh, about you? Do they know that you're one of the finest wide receivers in the state? No, sir, no, sir, but I appreciate that. Right, so tell me what you're doing this morning. Kind of fill me in on how you're, how you're managing this car line. So we are standing out here and we open the door for the kids and as soon as they walk out we uh, tell them have a great day and give them a high five. Are you uh, are you committed to being an educator one day? I am. Committed to do yes, it? Yes sir. You know we need teachers. Yes sir. And we need to ask you a question here. Yes sir. So are you going to be an educator one day? I am. What made you decide to be an educator? Well I've always wanted to ever since I was a little kid and I never lost that love of wanting to be a teacher. Yes. Does education run in your family? It does. It does. This it is does. Dr. Vicki Younger's daughter here. She's a senior at Airline, and we're so proud of her. <laughs> Tell us what you like about helping this in the morning with Carlisle. These kids, they get to see people older than them, people that yeah. can mentor them better. That's why I feel like being well, here is they get so excited to see us because we're so big to them. Because yeah. Yeah. Uh, you are what yeah. they want to become. Yeah. Yes, sir. And they are where you are. You are where they want to be one day. And that's the whole thing, and, and, and you are really larger than life in your eyes. Hi. Oh, you're both so cute. So Happy I heard it's day. Dot Day. It is. Is that right? Where are your dots? Have a great day. Oh, I love the dots. That looks so cool. no more impactful profession than teaching. Like you can change the world through teaching. So I mean this is like and this is the heartbeat of the community and, and everything. So you know I'm pretty passionate about it. So we're joined with Coach Reggie Digilarmo and uh, Reggie this is not the first program that you've ever started uh, with with me as a matter of fact. Yes, you were very successful. Uh, as a teacher at airline, so tell us a little bit about the genesis of this uh, pre-educator program that we have going in Bristol. Okay, so I'm glad you asked about that. So the start of the pre-educator program, the whole purpose and intent behind it was to address the obvious teacher shortage. We know that there that 60 percent of teachers live within 20 miles of the school that they currently teach at. And they grew up and they attended those schools within 20 miles of where they taught at. So what we realized is that within our own halls at high schools, we actually have our future educators that are gonna be there. So what we wanted to do is we want to foster that growth. And we wanted to identify those kids that had those qualities of great teachers and start getting them into the field of education. So this pre-educator program is a dual enrollment program it is with LSUS, and so we, these students get up to 12 hours of college credit, wow. which is awesome. So that's a full semester right there that they're getting of the same exact courses that they're gonna take at LSUS. So if they were a student there, they're getting that experience. So, and the most important thing was, not only do they get that content, but they get real experiences of being educators. It's beyond making copies, it's beyond mm -hmm helping teachers out in the classroom. They're not only helping them in the classroom, but they're actually learning the best instructional strategies, the best classroom management practices, and all those things that they could use in their future career. What are the positives about being an educator? Well, I think there are so many positives about being an educator. Um, I always tend to share with them that I was not as I was not gonna go to school to be an educator. I went to school and I was a geology major and I was an oil and gas for a year. And I realized the impact that I could make on others. And we talk a lot about that in this class, how you can make a difference in the lives of others. And they garner real life experiences actually being in the classrooms and actually get to see those teachers make that impact and make a difference in their lives. And so I want for them to have that experience with their with teachers with coaches many of them want to be coaches they want Good. to be leaders of drama club or student council they want to do those things when they go back and educate in the classroom and i think 
not only as a teacher and educator, you can make an impact in the classroom, but you can make an impact in their lives outside of the classroom as well. The negative, what are the things that they will encounter so they won't be surprised? Absolutely, so it, we're very real in this class. We talk about all the things that you know, could be a challenge for them to overcome in the classroom. Um, we don't hide anything. We talk about all the things to address, but we also find ways, uh, solutions to address. Um, we talk about money management. We talk about, they look at a teacher's salary and how we're gonna actually make it work for us in the future and how it is actually totally manageable and you can make it work. Um, there are so many incentives that we see. The students see in the classroom, they see, you know, teachers doing classroom management. They may see a student that is presenting a challenge to the educator. They get to see those teachers work through those situations. So what you're doing in here, when they go back to their home school, they actually now can pick out some of the some of the traits, some of the tricks of the trade, if you will. Yes, sir. In fact, many of them, when they come back, they, they start seeing a classroom a little bit differently. They've started doing actual observations, the same observations that they would do as a student at LSUS. And they actually find different things like bell ringers and where where what the objectives really mean and which part of a lesson that they're going through. And then they start to see, oh, that's why my teacher does it this way. So it's pretty cool. They get a different perspective on education. So tell me about uh, Educators Rising. What does that mean? Oh, so this is a great new initiative that we are bringing into our uh, throughout Bossier Parish. Like I said, we know that the future educators, the future of Bossier Parish is right here in That's our right. halls. And so we're trying to continue to foster that by identifying middle schoolers and high schoolers throughout Bossier Parish who may potentially be educators who may eventually take this class. And so this is a national teaching organization um, that students can be a part of. And we're going to start taking this club initiative where these students are going to be leaders of this club. We're going to talk about the profession. We're going to talk about all the things. Um, we're going to have some great dialogue and these students are going to lead them. And then not only that, but of course the coaching side of me, our students get to compete. Mm -hmm. They get to compete in things sure. like interactive bulletin board, lesson planning and delivery, which is education based competitions. But also they get to compete in impromptu speaking. Um, a creative lecture, which are some things in job interview. Those are some things that could be applied in professions beyond the realm of education so that they could use in many capacities in life. So they get the full experience. They get to see everything and they get to compete in, at a local, regional, state, and even national level. And we hope that we get to have some students actually uh, representing us from Bossier Parish at the national level. Well, I do know this for a fact, that if, if you're involved with it, it's going to be a successful program, no matter what. Because well, whatever you touch turns to gold. <laughs> and we thank you for your effort and thank for, you. for all these young people. Because uh, we, we want this to grow and grow and continue to grow to where we have standing room only for people that want to come teach. That's right. So, you got a great group right here that are great leaders. So, so thank right. you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your effort. Thank you, Mr. Olin. All right. Do you have some extra time? Want to positively impact the lives of children and earn as much as $120 per day? Bossier Schools has the opportunity for you. Become a substitute teacher. For more information, contact the Bossier Schools principal today. Bossier Schools, making a difference together. Bossier Schools is hiring, not only for teachers, but substitutes as well. Dr. Tracy Burrell is the Retention and Recruitment Supervisor for Bossier Schools. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. We talked last segment about educators rising as well as the pre-educator pathway, but there are other ways that we're also trying to recruit teachers. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, Bossier Parish has quite a few initiatives already in place. Actually, they were already in place before I arrived in July that we're very proud about. We're gonna be able to talk about some of those uh, in just a few moments. Not just high school students, but college students as well who've majored in education. They're here uh, for their residency this year. Yes, we have about 15 students from local universities such as Northwestern, LSUS, Louisiana Tech, but then also some out-of-state universities that have chosen Bossier Parish for their residency placement. So we're really proud 
of, of our district and the name that's getting out there. Yeah. And there's definitely an incentive for them to choose Bossier Parish for their residency because they get a stipend as well. They do get a stipend from the Louisiana Department of Education. Uh, our mentors also get paid stipends for supporting the teacher residents, and we're excited about that, that they're valued in that way and they're able to be compensated. Our ultimate goal being that they become familiar with Bossier schools and that they will want to stay once they graduate. This is correct, and just so, just a little history about the teacher residency program. It actually debuted in 2014 when the Louisiana Department of Education decided to move from a one semester student teaching experience to a full year residency. So our student teachers, our teacher residents, I should say, they get two semesters in really learning about Bossier, learning about Bossier students, Bossier practices, teaching practices, so that they're prepared to stay here and become full-time teachers. Well, we definitely have a great group of teacher residents, so how about we introduce you to a few of them? Super excited to just finally be in the classroom, actually implement and practice what I've been working on for so long, it feels like. Bossier Parish has a really good reputation and some really good leadership, and it's in a really good location. I came from Dallas, Texas. Yes, <laughs> I don't plan on going back, so I, I would like to stay. excited to just try so many different grade levels and see how each teacher shows me the things that they've learned and that I'll be able to work with these kids and new grades that I've never experienced before. I'm just so excited to get in the classroom. Just the phenomenal leadership and the family culture that is here. I've grown up in Bossier School so it's so great to feel like I'm giving back. I'm excited to be in the classroom with all the little ones because I haven't gotten a lot of experience because of the pandemic to be in a classroom. So I'm excited to be around them and see how they are. My mom actually works in Bossier schools and she's been here for like 20 plus years and has had nothing but the best experience here. So I just had to follow her footsteps. Our teacher residents will be with us throughout the year and uh, then they graduate hopefully uh, and then are hired full-time on with Bossier Schools. Then we have another program, the Parent to Teacher program. Yes, Parents to Teachers or what we call P2T. It gives an opportunity for Bossier Parents to invest in the current individuals that are working in our classrooms right now as paraprofessionals. And we're excited about this program because again, they're already vested, they're working with our students, and they probably consider teacher uh, teaching or education as a career, but maybe don't really know how to get started. And so we're able to support them financially with practice exams. We're also able to coach them through the teacher certification process. I, I enjoy that so much and I get that opportunity to show them the big picture, but then also to drill it down to action steps for them. We have tutors that support them with passing the praxis on the first try, and then we're able to support them again throughout the program and move them into full-time positions when they are available. And we found uh, that last year oftentimes they would have their four-year degrees, maybe not in education, and so this helps us, you know, basically get them into the classroom as certified teachers. You mentioned the praxis. There have been some changes at the state level. Yes, so at the state level, our state uh, removed the requirement for praxis core, and praxis core is the test in reading, writing, and math. They removed it from, at, from a state requirement, but also from Bessie policy. And there are some misconceptions about that. I know we'll talk about that in just a moment, but um, that would open the door for some individuals to move into alternate certification programs a lot faster and then move into the, the classroom. Because you had heard that, you know, there were some who had actually majored in education, had trouble passing parts of the praxis, and so unfortunately that's when they decided to perhaps go into another line of work. Yes, the Louisiana Department of Education and the Board of Regents put together a retention and recruitment task force with individuals across the state. And what they found in their study was that over a thousand individuals 
uh, got hung up in the process somehow with trying to get through the Praxis core exams. They were passing content knowledge exams and also the PLT, which is that mm -hmm. final scenario based exam, but something with Praxis core. And so with a thousand individuals not being able to move past that point and getting into teacher education programs, that's, that's all our, our shortage right I was going to say, that would really move the needle as far as teacher recruitment as well as retention then. Absolutely. And, and just, I want to say this, that a lot of people believe that, you know, doctors should take certification exams, lawyers should take bar exams, teachers should take certification exams, and our teachers are still taking mm -hmm. certification exams. It's just the Praxis Core that has moved away from teacher certification requirements. Teachers are still required to take their content knowledge exam as well as their PLT. That's the misconception that you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. It's just simplified a little bit on the front end, but they do still have to have those those other certifications. Absolutely, to get then. initial licensure that is required. So we're having tea and talk coming up soon for people who might be watching and think maybe that is for me. Maybe I should, you know, look into going back into teaching. Yes, we're going to have tea and talk on Tuesday, September 27th, and this is our opportunity to take the information to our community. We know that there are individuals out there that have been thinking about teaching but don't know know necessarily how to get started. And so this is our way of bringing the information to you. So we're looking forward to seeing you at McAllister's mm -hmm. Deli off Bean Boulevard on Tuesday, September 27th from 4.30 to 6.30. 4.30 until 6.30. We'll even buy you a glass of tea. Right? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Or a lemonade as well. There you go. Hey, we also have raised substitute teacher pay substantially this year. And so that's a huge incentive for uh, people who might be interested in that. Yes, we are thankful to our school board for approving that and moving the needle with the substitute pay. So it's $100 for those that have high school diploma, 110 for those who have a bachelor's degree, and then 120 for those that have teacher certification. And we see this as a pipeline opportunity. So you have an individual who's considering teaching but not really ready to dive in. Mm -hmm. A substitute role may be the opportunity sure. for them to see how teaching works. And so we really encourage individuals to consider substitute teaching, especially if they're thinking about teaching as a profession. And that is great income, 100 to $120, depending on experience level each day. And I can tell you, uh, you can be as busy each month as you want to be because Absolutely. of the need for substitutes. Flu and cold season is approaching <laughs> us, and so we are always needing quality individuals before our students, especially if our teachers cannot be there. How would somebody who's interested apply to be a substitute? They would contact the principals of the schools of their interest and okay. really connect with them and have an interview with them, and then they will take the next steps. Right. Dr. Burrell, thanks so much for your time. Exciting things happening at Bossier Schools to uh, try to address the teacher crisis. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're coming right back. Have you been thinking about becoming a teacher, but have no clue about how to get started? Help is on the way. Join us for Tea and Talk on Tuesday, September 27th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at McAllister's Deli on Bean Boulevard. Come learn all about teaching in Bossier from seeking certification to completing the application process. Bossier Schools wants you to become our next difference maker. Learn how at Tea and Talk, September 27th at McAllister's off Bean. We hope to see you there. You know, Sonia, October is National Bullying Prevention Month, and in next month's episode, we want to take a deep dive into what that looks like and go on the record mm -hmm. with uh, what's happening around the country with bullying and the impact that it's playing and, and, and some of the safeguards that are being put in place. I know our, our summer legislative session has been very active and uh, things that have been passed, and we want to go into that. Also, maybe educate our community a little bit on what bullying really is and the process that you go through, yeah. uh, how you can actually uh, go to the schools and uh, launch a, uh, a complaint or file a complaint with the school, and then how we follow up and the determination that we make. So we want to take some time and really and really delve into that and, and give, a, give an inside look to our community of what that looks like. Such an important topic and one that we hope no one will miss. Um, and then on a much lighter note, we are going to go into the kitchen, or at least you are, <laughs> and we are going to be dicing, chopping, and talking food with Bip Still Chef Ryan Gillespie. I tell you what, he's a fantastic chef. Uh, he leads the culinary arts program here at Bip Still, but he has also made it to the first round of finalists for the Golden Chef competition. So we're gonna be cooking up a little fun with Chef Ryan Gillespie. Well, we're I gonna told, go rolling with rolling there. I told my wife that I was gonna do that. And she said, good, learn something and bring it back <laughs> home. Because, the students can teach us yeah, a I'm, thing or two as well. So this is gonna put me on the spot. That's fine, look forward to it. 
So that's all the time we have for now. We want you to be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. And that way, every time one of our episode uh, episodes launches, that you'll be notified of that. We want you, you to be a part of this continued journey that we have through the school year with Bozier Schools and On the Record. Yeah, we appreciate you joining us. Have a great week. This episode of On the Record with Bozier Schools is brought to you by Citizens National Bank. From checking and savings accounts to mortgage and refinancing, Citizens National Bank is here for all of your personal banking needs and is honored to be a proud partner of Bozier Schools. This has been a Bozier Schools production. Join us next time when we go On the Record with Bozier Schools.